Hey everybody, it's Brian from Summit Racing here along with my friend Alex. Uh, we have been working on Project White Lightning. Uh, as you know, we've been bringing the thing, you know, basically we started off box stock. Uh, since then, we've actually done some series of upgrades, you know, suspension, the wheel and tire package, the brakes, all of which it needed. And then we ran the car out at Sonoma, California, the famous raceway, which is the very first event for all EVs. And it's kind of like a LS Fest in that they do drag race, they do autocross, and we got to run on the road course with the car. So since the car was stock, as you know, we've done a series of upgrades. We did the iBox suspension, we did the wheels and tires, we did the Hawk brake pads, all of which were definitely necessary, along with the Summit brake fluid, all good things. And we actually placed very well with the car. You know, we really tested this car. You know, we thought we had it built up pretty much as well as we could, but we learned. And when we learn about things, we pass these things on to you. One of the big things is these cars don't have the best brakes in the world, even with the 600 degree fluid from Summit Racing Equipment and some good brake pads on it. We still had issues with it on the road course. Um, but at the same time, you know, Alex, let, let's talk a little bit about what happened. Yeah, so we actually learned a lot out there since we have a few suspension uh, aftermarket parts on here and uh, some things don't always line up the way you expect them to, but we ended up suffering a uh, ABS wire sensor failure, which as we found out, disables quite a bit on the car, uh, including regen braking, traction control, stability, and power steering. Which is uh, awesome. Which is a great way to find out in the middle of an autocross course. So um, we could take a look here and just see what it looks like and how we might be able to avoid those failures in the future. All right guys, so we can see here some of the aftermath and damage we've done to our car from the Holly EV Fest. Uh, as you can see here, we kind of suffered a, a bit of a uh, ABS sensor wire failure, but that's because uh, we tend to be running uh, 275 wide tires. And with our uh, unplugged billet adjustable upper control arms, we got our three and a half at negative camber in there, which can cause some clearance issues. Now, uh, granted, it's something you just got to be careful of and check while uh, installing. And we didn't have enough clearance clearly on our tire, so we'll go back and make sure when we get a new sensor installed that we've got plenty of clearance. Also here, check out our brake rotors. That uh, it got uh, got a little workout. Now these are the considered the stealth mid-size brakes on here, so they're not the full performance option, but they're still the larger upgraded rotors. And uh, on the road course, we were running full regen to try to maximize life on our brakes, but on autocross we had it off, so it got quite a bit of workout. All right, guys. So here was a source of our failure here on our Tesla. Broken ABS wire. You lose a lot of stuff. This can be a dangerous aspect, especially in the middle of a race course. So always remember that uh, when you're installing new parts and products to always check your clearances before going out on a final test drive. All right, so now we're here at the back of the car. Um, so far, when we dropped the car with the iBox suspension kit, we dropped it a little over an inch and a half. The problem with that is that when we do that, we have very limited options in terms of adjusting the negative camber or the toe. There is a little bit of a camber bushing here in the back of this multi-links uh, rear suspension, but we have an answer for you. Yes, we do. So luckily, um, our friends over in Plug have provided us some uh, toe and camber links that we're gonna replace here in our multi-link. That should give us all the range and adjustment that we need. Exactly, how much camber are we gonna go for? I believe we're going to target somewhere near the negative two range. Okay. And just see how that goes and we'll go from there. Exactly. But here's the nice thing about it. They're all adjustable. So if we need a little bit more, we're going to be able to figure it out at the track. We're going to have tire temperatures, you know, across basically from the inside to the out. Very scientific -y. And uh, with that, let's hit it. All right. What we're going to do here to, before we remove our tow link is we're going to go ahead and mark our camber bolt in the spot on the frame and then on the bolt head itself. So that way we know exactly where to put it in just to try to get our alignment close so we can get it over the alignment shop. All right, folks, so here we have basically the, the camber links and the two arms, uh, basically showing you what you're starting off with, non-adjustable versus these beautiful parts here. Uh, to put on your car, which gives you the negative camber that we're looking for, just the toe to what we want. So how do we know we're gonna be able to make it to the alignment shop? This is factory, we know that the alignment was good. This is aftermarket, we know that it's completely adjustable. So what can we do to eyeball these things so that they're close enough to get to the alignment shop? Well, these bolts in this thing are a little under 14 millimeter, and we just so happen to have tools at our disposal that are also roughly 14 millimeter. 
So we are running the bolt through this here and we are running this through here and they are parallel. And if we start turning these one way versus the other, I can count my flats. One, two, three, four, and that's basically about it. So if I go ahead and, and roughly go two flats back, one, two, we are gonna be very, very close between this link and this one and allow us to get to the alignment shop without, you know, basically, you know, burning our tires up. So 13.9 millimeter and our miscellaneous tool around the shop here, 13.9. All right, for this install, we do need two very large nut, uh, wrench sizes for these adjuster nuts. So we ended up needing an inch and a quarter for the actual adjuster bar itself, and an inch and an eighth for the adjuster nut. Just as a small heads up in case you don't have wrenches these sizes. All right, gang, so we've just shown you the uh, installation of our camber and tow links on the back of our car, which is gonna allow us to get a little over two degrees of camber in the back. You know, definitely bring the back end of the car more in balance with the front when we're going on the road course, et cetera. So it's just the next step to going faster. Also, another side benefit of getting some more negative camber in there is we are able to run a wider wheel and tire in there and basically put that wheel and tire exactly where we want to in the wheel well. So all pretty cool. Alex, any other words? Uh, it's like we're looking pretty good. We're going to get this thing dirty next and uh, see where we go from there. It's going to be pretty cool. What you see what we do with this car next is going to be crazy. Something you've never seen before. Um, but with that, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell. And we are all your, your basic, your, your source for everything EV here at Summit Racing.